Hello my friends, how are you doing? Today I'm gonna give you 10 amazing tricks on how to organize your files and assets so you will never lose anything again. My name is Olivio, I'm a professional designer and I want to thank all of my patrons who support me and make these videos possible. Thank you for that. Let's get started. So already in Affinity Photo, there are some tools that you can use to stay organized. And I will give you some secret sauce on how to use them even better. So for example, up here on File and New, we already have two cool things that we can use. First off, there are the templates and I made a video about them that I will link in the video description. But just to give you a heads up, they are Affinity Photo files. They just have a different ending that is called dot af template and you can use them for example for mockups but you can also use them for master files for example to set up files that have the right dimension for different social media platforms you have your logo in there and your watermark you have some sample text with the right font and the right size this has the benefit that you don't always have to set up these things they are already in the right position and you don't have to think about all the things you would need to finish that file so this saves a lot of time and struggle and uh, do that it's really really useful Another thing, if you only need the size, you can make your own presets and give them your own names. This can be super useful if you use certain sizes or resolutions or like, for example, the color format. You use them for printing, for online, for an overlay for your video, stuff like that. If you have these kind of files, you can set up here the right dimensions. You can even give them the names of customers. If you have a customer, for example, who has a newsletter, who has always this kind of strange files size you make a preset for that and then you click on that and it's done you don't have to think about that so this is super easy to stay organized then of course we have some other tools in here that are very underrated i would say for example we have the brushes you all know the brushes but did you know that you can create your own brush categories and the cool thing here is you can not only use these categories to make your own brushes but if you say for example i use this and this and that brush for let's say retouch of uh, like landscapes or for digital painting or for your holiday pictures you have your favorite kind of tools you can make your own collection of that I will link videos on how to create and organize your files in the video description. So this is also covered. Then of course you have your swatches and swatches are either gradients or colors. You might be amazed that they are really important because you want to have a certain style, certain, certain kind of expression, certain kind of colors. So again, you can create your own palettes here. You can import and export and all these kind of cool things. But on top of that, you can also create a palette from a document, which is the document you have open right now, or from an image. And I would suggest using create palette from image because this gives you a little bit more settings. So you can use any kind of image like a JPEG, load it in and then select how many colors you want to pick from that. And also if you have your brand color, Colors. If you have colors that you use often or like a lot, you can create specific palettes with this. I also have a video about colors and palettes and swatches. I will link that in video description too. Then we have our assets. And yes, I also have made a video about that that I will link in the video description. And these assets, they can be super useful. So you stay organized with things that you use a lot. For example, picture frames, grunge maps, light effects, lens flares, fog, uh, all these kind of things, uh, lightning strikes, all these kind of effects you want to use a lot. Put them in there, also logos and designs and all these kind of things that you use. Put them in the assets so you have them handy and ready when you need them and they are where you want to have them. So these are the tools inside of Affinity Photo, but there is more that you should know about. For example, I'm gonna suggest a software for you that is completely free actually. It is called Adobe Bridge. Yes, it's from Adobe, I know. And the important thing here is that other than Lightroom, this is a digital asset manager. And the importance here that this is not just for photos. This is very important because often 
you have more than photos. You have doc files, you have PDFs, you have maybe sounds or video clips or a lot of things you use often in your projects when you make your slideshows, when you create your photo books, when you do all these amazing projects. There is a lot of different file types. So this is a digital asset manager and you can organize them by keywords, by text, by ratings, by folders, all these kind of nice things. So that is a good thing to use. Then, of course, we have to talk about files and about folder structures. Let's go back in Affinity Photo for a second. Here I want to show you, for example, the file that I have for my YouTube thumbnails. You can see here I have my own logo. I have the Affinity Photo logo. I have a little sample text that already has an outline around it. So I have all the elements that I need. I only need to place now the picture in the background, resize it, write the text, boom, and I'm done. And this saves a ton of time. This is very nice. And of course, I have the same thing for Facebook in the right format for a Facebook cover or a Facebook thumbnail, depending on how you want to call that, also with the elements already set up for me. Good. So let's talk about folder structure because that is really important. Here's a little trick that I am using and this is to use numbers at the start of folders so they are always in the same position. I don't have to search through them. So you can see like these are demo folders, by the way. I have my company, customers, asset archive. So I know where the files are. When you go into company, for example, you could set up things that you need a lot. For example, for me, it's branding and marketing, like the covers I or thumbnails I create for YouTube and Facebook, for Gumroad and Instagram, all these kind of things are in here. And then also website, YouTube, Gumroad. So uh, name them after the projects, after the most important things that you want to work on. And of course, then inside of that, you have different subfolders that are also named, maybe also use these kind of numbers. For example, here, different masters of, for social media files. Then I have my logos separate, for example, from different companies like the Serif software and Adobe and all kind of logos that you want to use in your production if this is what you do. If you do something else, of course, you need other things. Okay, let's go back here. And here, for example, we have customers. Now, there is a list of names with customers. Like I said, these are demo customers. And let's click on this one. And here's another trick. You can see here it says 1901. So I would put the uh, date backwards because uh, the folders are organized by numbers. So when you have 0119, 0120, it is organized by the 01, which is not very helpful for you. But if you write the number of the year first and then 01 could be either the first project or January or stuff like that, all of this 19, 2019 projects will be sorted in that way. And then 2020 will come under that. So it's a lot easier to organize it like that. Good. Then when you go into a project, what you want to have is mainly, for example, your source files, which is the files you get from the customer. And then you have your assets and also the licenses of the assets. So if you buy assets or download them from another page, you, for example, want to also save in here the receipts for that or the license agreement, stuff like that. So you know how you can use that. And if you come back like a year later, you still know where you got the font from, where you got the picture or the sound clip from, stuff like that. And then you also have your project files. This is where the finished stuff goes that you have created for your customer. Maybe it's a photo book of their, I don't know, baby reveal party or stuff like that. Whatever you do for them, you can save that under project files. And I would save different versions like when the customer comes back and says, I want to have these and that changes. Make a copy. So go into Affinity Photo or Publisher or Designer and click on Save As and then make a new version. Because when they say, well, now that I see it, I like the other version we had before better, you can go back to that. So you want to have several versions of that. All right. 
Another thing that you want to think about is that you also maybe want to save fonts here when the fonts come from the customer, stuff like that, or when you download specific fonts from the internet, you want to also save them inside of these project folders. That is pretty important. Okay, let's go back to our main folder here. And you can see here I have an asset archive, which can be very handy if you collect a lot of pictures from the internet, uh, from pages where you can use Use them or other kinds of uh, assets like I said might be sound might be vector graphics all these kind of things so let's go in here and you can see for example it's audio fonts images vectors videos all these kind of things if you go into images you can have more things like you can say backgrounds clouds fog lightning overlays portraits all these kind of things where I say okay these are things I need to use often so I make an archive I don't have to look them up every single time or have to search for them every single time I want to use that this can save a lot of time also when you come back to a project years later and you still want to change something you want to reuse it or repurpose it for another project you still have these original files and this by the way is also very important for your customers and this is why you need to have um, a source file asset folder because if you just save them in the project file in affinity photo you might have changed something about that in a destructive way so you can't go back and uh, if you then later want to change that you want to have the original asset so you can still go back import that again work with that again so that is super important to have that so this is how i stay organized thank you very much for watching this video i hope it was helpful if you have questions leave them in the comments see you in the next tutorial bye